All right, so um, here we have the graph of f prime, and it says the line tangent to the graph of f prime at x is equal zero is vertical. So it basically means that we have like a tangent line going like that at this point. And this is not differentiable at x equals two. So which of the following statements is true? So when it says not differentiable, you can see like um, this graph, you know, doing this weird spike thing. However, though, um, it's kind of actually a little misleading for um, for the graph of f because um, if you have the graph of f, let's see an example. If the graph of f showed something like like a sharp point at you know over here, let's say, then it, the f prime of the f prime of the f prime, the derivative of f wouldn't exist at this point because the derivative from the left would look something like that, and the derivative. Um, and the right would look something like that. So they're not equal to. So this is like so I sense this is gonna this is trying to mislead you here. Anyways, so um so which of these would be true? So it says f prime does not exist at x equals two. Well it does. Because it's right there, because the value of f f prime of f prime of two is you know is whatever this value is, maybe it's like two or something. So it does exist. So that's false. F is decreasing on an interval two to four. If F was decreasing, that means that F prime would be negative on this interval. So it would be below the X axis. So it's not, because obviously it's positive the whole time. It's positive on this side and that side. The graph of F has a point of inflection at X equals two. Okay, so this is, so this, so this is probably what this, point, this graph is getting at. So um, remember, a point of inflection basically tells you that f prime changes from increasing to decreasing, from increasing, I guess we don't have to write it, but just so you know what I'm saying, from increasing to decreasing. Now, Think carefully about what that means because it doesn't mean that f prime goes from positive to negative or negative to positive. It just means that you know that if the graph was was going up in value, that as soon as it starts going down in value, that could be a potential inflection point. And that's what's going on here. See, it's increasing here. F prime is increasing over here, and then it starts to decrease on this side. So this is a possible inflection point. That would be our answer. Let's just go through the other ones just in case. It has a point of inflection at x equals zero. Um, no, because you know you have a vertical tangent line. And flat, the point it would actually say the second derivative would be undefined. F the, uh, the second derivative of f would be let's say undefined at there. And a local max at x equals zero. Again, um, it actually be the opposite because we're going. We would go downward. We're going. I mean that x equals zero. The graph, the graph of f will be going downward because the graph is negative here. Then after um, x equals zero, the graph is increasing, so it's going upward. So you have a potential minimum there. So the answer is still C. So. All right. All right. Um, eighty-three. So a particle moves at along the x-axis, so it's positioned at time t is, t is more than zero is given by x of t and the derivative is you know given here. Acceleration of the particle is zero. No, the acceleration of the particle is zero when t, t equals. So essentially we're just gonna solve the equation of the acceleration for it's zero. So we're gonna basically set a of t equal to zero. Find what the t value makes it zero. So we have to understand what is a of t. a of t is the derivative of velocity. So um, you would essentially just take the derivative of this because this is this is position. The derivative of position is velocity. So this is the this is the velocity equation. So then the derivative of velocity equation would be the acceleration equation.
So um, there's actually there's probably two ways you can go about this since you can use a calculator. You could graph this and look at, analyze the graph for where the um, tangent line is horizontal, or you could um, solve this equation for zero. So a of t would be negative 40 t cubed plus 18 t plus 8. And we can we can we could we could graph this and see where the zero is. It's probably gonna be easier than having have using algebra. So it looks pretty messy. Anyways, so go to our graphing calculator. We go ahead and negative forty x to the third plus eighteen x plus eight. Oh, that's pretty. Oh, so man, it looks like my um scale is off potentially. Okay, well, the zero is gonna be somewhere in there. So let's analyze it and find the zero. Go down to the left of that. Scroll to the right. You can see my zero is about 0 0.831. So then the answer would be D. Okay, the function f is continuous on the interval 1 to 7, the closed interval 1 to 7. If the integral from 1 to 7 of f of x is 42, and the integral from 7 to 3 of f of x is negative 32, then the integral from 1 to 2 of 2 times f of x is what? Okay, so um, let's use some algebra integral manipulation. So um, the integral from 1, let's just look first what's the integral of f of x from 1 to 3. Once you get this, then you can just double it and get this value. So this would just be the integral from 1 to 7 of f of x dx minus the integral from 3 to 7 f of x dx. So we're given that this integral is 42. So this will be 42 minus this integral. Now, if you see here, it, it, the endpoints are basically going in reverse. So um, when they're going in reverse, that means that the in, if you were going to go from 3 to 7 instead of 7 to 3, then it would just be the opposite of negative 32. So it would just be positive 32. So you would just have 42 minus 32. And then here you would get you would get 10. So the integral from there. The integral from 1 to 3 of fx to dx is 10. And since we're doing 2 times that, it's just 2 times 10. So our answer would just be 20. All right, so let's look at um, five. All right, if f of x is a twice differentiable function, and let we're letting y equals t of x be the line tangent to the graph of f of f at x equals two, if t of x is more than or equal to f of x for all real x values, which is the line that's true. Okay, this is kind of a analytical like. Uh, like you really got you really got to think. I'll put it that you really got to think. So it's not like a step by step way, but it's um it's pretty um intuitive once you once you can once you can make a picture. Always try to make a picture when you're dealing with. I would honestly say almost every calculus problem if you're confused. Um, but especially when you're talking about like you know you know second derivatives, first derivatives, like concavity, you know that sort of thing. Anyways, so um. If the graph of y of t has to be more than, or sorry, if the graph of t it has to be more than the graph of f, then it's basically going to be above it. So the tangent line is going to be above the graph. So think about that, how that would work. Like, let's say you just have your graph maybe like this, f, you, you pick a point, not, oh, an arbitrary point here. Your tangent line would be something like that. That would be t, you know. 
So uh, that's what we're trying to see. When um, when is this when is this true? So we want to see how this relates to the shape of the graph. How does be, the, the tangent line being above the graph relate to the shape? So let's look at when it's not going to be above it. If we if the graph went like this, our tangent line at the point here would be below it. So in general, anytime the graph is you know curving upward when it's concave up, the graph of the, the tangent line will be below. So we don't want that. We want this. Anytime the graph is you know concave down, the tangent line, no matter where you draw it, will be above it. But as soon as you start going concave up, see the, the, the tangent line then goes below. It switches from being above to being below at some point. So you want the graph of the of the function to be concave down. So when it's concave down, that means you want the second derivative to be um, negative. Because when the second derivative is negative, that means it's concave down. So since we're talking about a specific point, we're saying it'll be, our answer will be e because that's saying that the second derivative at that point is concave. Is you know, it's it's basically it's basically showing that the graph is negative or concave down. Not negative, but the graph is concave down. It has this sort of shape. So that would work there. So again, really think about this one. Eighty-six. The vertical line x equals two is an asymptote for the graph of the graph of the function, which of these must be false. So another kind of theoretical one. So again, let's, let's draw a picture. So if we have a graph, our xy plane, if we have a vertical asymptote, then you, you know, our asymptote is going to be looking something like this. And what does that mean about the function? That means, you know, when the function is approaching this line, it's going to, you know, it's going to tend towards positive infinity or negative infinity. You know, it may do this, or you know may you know do something like this. It could technically do that, but it wouldn't actually be a function. But it could, it could, um, it would it would go close to the line. It could go to close to the line, you know, in a downward direction. It could, it could be from the left, from the right. The point the point is, is it needs to be approaching positive infinity or negative infinity. The function has to. So um. If if we're if we're if we're gonna say that this is true, and then if this is <laughs> this is basically saying that the graph equals zero at x equals two, so that means the graph is gonna you know go to this point. So it's gonna have a point at um, two zero, which is nil. Which is this is not gonna. It's just basically just not gonna. Be correct because it's not an asymptote. Is asymptote basically tells you you're going towards the line, but never really, you know, gonna hit it. You're just gonna get infinitely close. That's wrong. Um, so I mean, that's probably that's that's our answer. But let me just talk about the other ones just so we can better understand this. Um, so okay, so here's an example of what I mean by you know, as x goes towards two, if it the limit is negative infinity, that means you know it's going downward. Could be going downward that way, that way. So that that's okay. That that could be true. Same thing here. That means the graph is going upward. Whichever side, that's okay. Um, this actually has nothing to do with the asymptote. This has you know to do with um, I mean, potentially a horizontal asymptote. You know, and we won't we won't care about that. But that would be basically saying that if we had like a line y equals two, that as the graph went infinitely towards the right. It would you know go towards that line. That could be true because it has not really nothing to do with this line. And same thing for this. This is saying that if you as you go to the right, you know, the graph blows up to infinity. It could be a linear equation technically. So yeah, the answer would be problem A. Okay.